the Visual Neurology, we treat all aspects of nasal and sinus disorders, ranging from patients who may have nasal obstruction from deviated septum, turbinate enlargement, uh, the treatment of nasal polyps, patients with acute as well as chronic sinusitis, although many people don't realize two completely different entities. Sometimes they cross, but for the most part, two separate entities. Uh, we also treat patients with tumors, both, both benign and malignant, of the nose and paranasal sinuses. And lastly, you wouldn't think it, but brain fluid leaks or cerebral spinal fluid leaks are something that can present to a rhinologist by drainage through the nose. And that is something we specialize in here at uh, Mount Sinai, and performing those surgeries and once again an endoscopic or minimally invasive fashion. The sinus infections you see on TV, the patient holding their head with a box of tissues and a great deal of pain, that's what we call acute sinusitis. And that's, uh, like it sounds, an acute infection uh, within the sinonasal cavity. Many times it follows a viral infection. So a patient has a cold uh, for a few days, even up to a week, and after a few days of feeling better, they quickly go backwards. And that backwards is that bacterial infection or that acute bacterial sinusitis that has now started to erupt. And one of the misconceptions between a cold and an acute sinusitis is that many patients feel when they see green drainage or they have a fever or they have a really bad headache, it has to be a bacterial infection. Actually, the vast majority of the time it's just viral. And it's important to wait that seven days before deciding I need antibiotics or not. And uh, it's kind of tough to, to, uh, to handle that, but that's, that's the truth. The viral infections and bacterial infections will look exactly the same in that first week. And the vast majority in that first week will be viral. So I think that's one of the biggest uh, things to keep in mind. There's certain criteria, both major and minor, that we have that help us diagnose a patient with chronic sinusitis. Things like nasal obstruction, uh, headache, fatigue, decrease or loss of smell. Uh, chronic sinusitis tends to be more these, like we would call it, chronic, low-grade symptoms that just take away a patient's quality of life. Rather than those acute symptoms where a patient feels debilitated in those seven days with an acute infection. You can have acute sinus infections on top of the chronic changes that we see. So those patients are the ones we tend to see who really are having a tough time. You know, probably the most gratifying surgeries we do as sinus surgeons are uh, nasal polyp patients. You see patients come in with scans where every sinus is obstructed. You look into their nose with the same endoscope and you see polyps completely filling you know, their sinus and nasal cavity. You know, they have decreased smell or no smell, so unable to taste food, you know, but they consider that a norm. And when someone comes to your office, you know, and sees you for the first time and you find that, and they just don't know what's wrong, and then you treat that person. When the polyps get to a certain size, although we always do perform medical treatment, that patient will end up likely requiring surgery. And when you're able to remove those polyps, and get them on a topical regimen to help control the polyp regrowth and you give them a quality of life that they never knew that they could have had, that's what it's all about.